start every meeting with uh, our pledge allegiance to our flag. Would you rise and join us? Pledge allegiance to the flag, United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. County Attorney. All righty. Uh, I have uh, done the research on the new state golf cart uh, enabling statute. Um, and I uh, found a couple things that are required in these ordinances uh, that, that we did not have in ours. And so I added them uh, to, and you have the correct draft in front of you. One is under paragraph B2, the last sentence, you have to limit the number of passengers permitted to occupy a golf cart to four. And that's what I did. I simply followed the state language. Um, previously, we had had a $50 application fee for a permit, or $25, and before you adopted it, that was changed to $50 or increased because of the administrative cost of the sheriff. And those costs can go to the sheriff because they're administrative expenses. But then there's also the state required uh, on the back, under back page three, under penalties H. You have to specify that the that the fees uh, obtained for fines on the ordinances violations will be deposited in the county general fund. So that, that's the other thing. Other than that, it's the same ordinance you were looked upon favorably before, and now it may be passed as, as of July one when the state law takes effect. All right. Uh, anybody want to make a motion that we? Pass ordinance 2012-10. Make a motion that we would accept the ordinance 2012-10 uh, <coughs> for uh, golf carts on county roads. Motion. Second. Have second. Any discussion? Only to say again, a reminder, Brianna, Katie, um, this ordinance, whereas we're passing it today, this ordinance goes with the state ordinance, which does not take effect until July 1. So this does not give people the right to run their golf carts on the road before July 1. Okay, no further discussion. All in favor of the ordinance, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Thank you. <coughs> okay, there's another ordinance to be passed, and this is on the... Uh, Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, then the um, nepotism ordinance, I think, that the assessor has that in front of her. Uh, I uh, reviewed that to make sure that that complied with the requirements of the new Indiana law. Uh, this ordinance, as you know, is not, uh, is not generated here in this county. It's a requirement based upon state statute that every unit of government passes anti-nepotism ordinance. The idea of the law is to ensure that people are hired in their positions that merit and not because of their relationships to those hiring them. I think that probably says it as concisely as we can say it. Okay, I have before me the ordinance number 2012-11. entertain a motion that we pass this ordinance. So move. Motion. Second. Have a second. Discussion. 
Hearing none, all in favor raise your right hand. All opposed, the same sign. And Amy did a good job on that, by the way. I'll give her a plug. That was well. <laughs> I didn't have to change a thing. Unlike George's golf course, very much. <laughs> numerous changes. Actually, I drafted that ordinance too, George. It wasn't. Um, we have before you from Umbon Associates the uh, required uh, documents for the uh, Whitney County Holding Corporation, first mortgage refunding bonds. Um, that was preliminarily approved by you all on, that April, on the April 16th meeting. The schedule, the, the proposed timetable I have in front of me is for closing on this to be held on May 29th. It requires your signatures. Um, on <coughs> which the signatures are basically your final approval of this uh, transaction. So. Okay. Well, I know, we've <clears throat> I know we've discussed this to some degree, and the questions that was brought to me, and, and I appreciate that because it, it's a valid question. Um, the, the, sources and uses of the fund, the, the, the bonds that we will be selling will amount to $5,160,000 with a reoffering premium of $161,000 and funds on hand in the holding corporation $24,000 making a total of $5.346 million. Um, I think this board, I know this board said that we're willing to willing to refinance as long as it can be shown that we have a savings of at least $125,000. So my question I think to you Dan is at what point can we get out of this if it if it's determined that we can't save $125,000? Right now. I mean not designed today. I mean, once if you if you go and approve this day, the closing will be held, I presume, at the end of the month. But uh, but the bonds, I, that's another thing I don't understand. The bonds haven't been sold, so how can you have a closing when the bond sale? I, I don't think have they guys. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't well, think the I, bonds have been sold. Well, <coughs> I, I, the one variable. Interest rate on the day of closing will determine to some degree because if the interest rate, for example, would go up between now and then, you, you may well not be able to uh, uh, affect the $125,000 savings. All I have, the information out of down, is the same information that I think you have, which was this document they gave us in April on the estimated net savings, which was. So either 157 or 187, depending on how you read that um, and interpret it. That's all. That, that's all I have. But if this is like the EDC bonds, does does the bank not take the risk? They advance the money and then they sell the bonds, and they're able to sell the bonds. They know because of the rating, which is why we were waiting on the standard. Rating. So I, I assume they advance the money and then sell the bonds. That's how, in my mind, it works. Could I be a little bit wrong? I'm not a finance yeah. guy, but that's, that's what I think. That's how On the document that you have, if you go to the next to the last page, it says that the estimated net savings is $187,000 yes. yes. with an estimated net present value savings of one hundred fifty-seven. dollars I think that's the number we were shown, right? And right. that's kind of what we went with, and that's all I—I I guess that's all I really want is some kind of assurance that it's going to come in around that area. So I don't know where to. Uh, I know, so I, I don't know well, how to proceed. Well, I—I I mean, I can make contact with Mr. Mauser at Umbaugh, but as I heard his presentation. 
I heard him say it's depending on the rate of interest on the day. Yeah. <coughs> But even 157,000 wouldn't be that bad. But it just doesn't look like we're, we're gaining anything. Yeah, because because uh, the administrative costs are high, and the, I mean, there's no question about it. Because if you look in that estimate, uh, those estimates, the costs are up there. So I, I can. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Mr. Chairman, also, I think if we were determined not to sign it right now, we may still have the administrative fees from, or we're going to have fees from Ice Miller and Umbaugh that may put it to the, I mean, we're, we're still going to have huge fees there. Right. That's the bad part about this. Yeah. Well, I just, want, I just want to make sure we get a savings out of this thing. <clears throat> and I don't know how you can't because because interest rates are less than we're currently paying. So I don't understand how you can't have a savings, but will it cover the administrative fees? Well, it's got a two hundred fifty thousand dollar nut to crack there. So Because I, damn, where I was confused was I, I, I know what you're saying about the closing date, but yet, but yet the closing date normally comes after the sale of the bonds, and and, and I haven't seen any place where on what date we're going to sell the, the bonds, which they probably can't until we sign the documents. I'm guessing. Right. So. Right. So you know, you're you're between sort of a rock and a hard place. I mean, mm -hmm. I I can call on bond and say, hey, okay. What's the rate we're going to have? I mean, we know the rates are low right now, but I'm sure they're not going to say, we guarantee you're going to save $125,000. What they're going to say is, that's our best guess, those estimates that we gave you. You're not going to get a guarantee, is my, is my supposition. And at this point, the Whitley um, holding group has okayed this. Yes. They've okayed it, but, but in meeting with John, he also sees the same thing we see. And it was him that said, as a reminder, you said you got to save $125,000 or it doesn't go. I understand that part. I just don't know when that, when that clock starts. When, how, how do we know? So. Well, what, what if... <laughs> You approved this, the documents, you approved final approval conditionally based upon information from UNBAW that, that tells you at current rates in a day of the closing that you will save at least that much money. It make me happy as a plan. So. And then I'm happy to do that because I don't really have, I don't have the answer otherwise. That's not good. I don't know why we did not do anything without having some sort of insurance. You bet your rear end, they're going to get their share out of it. Yep. And if the county has to suffer with 50,000 savings, I guess it's 50,000. But they're still going to be there. And we know about how much they're projected. They know how much. They're not going to lose one dime. <coughs> and the county would be the one way. Sorry, you're just getting less funds or you're having less savings, but I understand the time zone too, but time is what time is to each individual. And I don't know why we should be rushed by that. Yeah, and, I, and I'm not suggesting that you should be. You know, we're talking millions of dollars. Right, right. Mm -hmm. right. Well, the only possible rush would be the whole reason you're doing it is because of the beneficial interest rate. So that could be the only possible reason to rush it or to get it done by a certain Well, then they should know what we're getting. Well, I'll email him and I'll report back. I, that's fine with me. I'm not, you know, I'm not the author of this thing, so. Approval then? I, I, I think we should do a conditional approval. Yeah. Okay. I would, I would, 
based on a minimum savings of 125. We've said 125 all along, so I don't know why we'd want to change that right now. So, uh, so I can look at the form motion. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, conditionally approve the uh, refinancing um, as long as we are shown that we are going to have the $125,000 savings. And Dan will ch check the tumble on that. Yes. And I will report, uh, I'll just report through Jim and we'll make it smooth. It might be an email. <coughs> but I'll, I'll email him yet this afternoon. Yeah, the okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, discussion. <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor of the conditional approval, raise your right hand. All opposed, the same sign. Motion carries two to one. All right. Uh, this, the other item in my report is it, it's, it's not a big deal, but just in this, to let you know what I'm doing uh, sometimes, uh, I got a request from the clerk. Proceed with collection of a fine that was issued by the election board against a candidate who had not filed his report per, per state statute, his finance report. Um, and so they had a hearing on that and they issued a fine. And uh, that, I guess, has not been paid. So uh, that'll take some legal work to collect. So, and it's not much, but I'm just like, you know, I'm doing it. So mm -hmm. I guess somebody's got to do it. So, I'm but you're doing it through the election board. I, yeah, I really am representing, I guess, the election okay. board. Okay. But I didn't want to just start doing it without you knowing. <coughs> Uh, It'd be better if you said it wasn't me, though, so I know. You know it's nobody in this room. Okay. <laughs> I thought I turned all mine in. Uh, it's, you never it's nobody in this room. Uh, the, the final item in my report, and I mentioned this again just prior to the, to the public portion of the meeting, but there's a there's a citizen, citizens that bought a, a property at, at our treasurer's tax sale that apparently was unaware that the property has some contamination on it. And I, I had a conversation with their legal representative wanting to know if there was a way that they could retract that. And I, of course, I didn't spend the time to research the statute. I doubt very much if there is. It's kind of a buyer beware type of deal. But just to let you know, there may be some further noise down the road about efforts to get that avoided or retracted. So I just tell it to you now informationally. Maybe maybe they'll decide not to ask for that, but it's in the air. So it's about six thousand bucks is what it involves. Six thousand. Several years ago we we had a property that was sold. It was contaminated. And those people got to it. Okay. Maybe it's changed since then. That'd probably be maybe longer than that. Was it iron board that time, do you think, or was it? No. no. Okay. You mean uh, in Whitley County? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. You've been here for what, what, 10 years, 9 or 10 years, probably. Okay. That's it was on Lime Street down here, and it's still the same way. And then fella bought it. He got it back on the basis that that was supposed to be this buyer beware spirit yeah. or whatever right. you call it. That was not brought out and that was something according to IDM and stuff that should have been listed on us. Yeah, I think the question is did, did the county meet their legal requirements yeah. in conducting the sale? Well, I'll have to look at that if it's raised. You know, and I, I thought you'd have a letter by now, but since you don't, we'll wait and see before the next meeting and what we'll bring it up. I was just just letting you know so you weren't surprised. Yeah, well, I'm just seeing what happened in the past. That might have been a 